This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. All right, we're back. We're in China now. We're in Beijing. This is Think Tech Asia, Think Tech Global. And we're talking today about uh, moving 21.7 million people a day across Beijing, a city larger than the size of the state of Connecticut. And to have this discussion, our regular contributing guest host is Russell Liu. He's in Beijing. Russell, it's so nice to see you. Where are you in Beijing? Well, Jay, it's nice to see you. I'm actually at a coffee house in the second largest publishing company in China next to the university, the Beijing Foreign Studies University. And I'm having a real cup of cappuccino, real cappuccino. <laughs> Fifteen years ago, you couldn't get this. <laughs> you do get around, Russell. <laughs> I... So why don't you introduce the subject to us? I mean, I remember when nine million bicycles in Beijing was a lot of bicycles, but we, we've changed that now. We have more people in Beijing. We have more development. We have a huge, big economy in Beijing. And that means transportation issues. Can you talk about it? Well, well, Jay, you know, China, Beijing has 21.7 million. And now that two years ago, it was awarded the bid for the 2022 Winter Olympics. So actually, this city is going to get huge. It's going to be a mega city. It's going to be now 82,000 square miles in a few years. And it's going to be bigger than the size of Connecticut. It's going to be bigger than the size of Kansas. And it's going to hold a population larger than a third of the United States. Imagine. Wow. This is corridor. So the transportation is critical. Yeah. And the city is ramping up its transportation in these days. Well, yeah, but, you know, I remember uh, you used to walk around with an attache case that had a gas mask in there. And I know that there's an inversion issue around Beijing with the perimeter roads and all that and the mountains outside of Beijing, it tends to fold in on itself and you get a lot of, a lot of problems with the air and breathing. Uh, is uh, 21.7 million people going to be, you know, are they going to be comfortable? And if you, if you uh, make it a third of the population of the United States, so it could be less comfortable. Uh, what do you expect is going to happen with the air in Beijing? Well, Jay, it's interesting because, um, you know, the mode of transportation had been bicycles, 9 million bicycles. Bicycles are making a comeback as part of the green movement in Beijing. Yeah. But I think the, the roads and cars are big thing in China. And, you know, the infrastructure is really very good. And I think I've got a video just to show our viewers out there what the road looks like on a clear day in Beijing, sunny skies, no pollution, but cars. Okay, let's take a look at it. Okay, that's, uh, you know, that looks like an American city, except... That row of, uh, you know, huge residential condos or apartment buildings on the left-hand side, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of units. And I remember when I visited you some years ago, um, you took me through a neighborhood like that, and uh, there was an awful lot of big buildings just like that. And uh, it was impressive. It, you, you, you could find that in an American city, but exactly in Beijing, it's bigger than an American city. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jay. In fact, that's a shot of high DN which is where a lot of the technology companies are. This is where the technology workers live. This is where all the major universities of China are located, mm -hmm. the high dead district. But, but this is kind of like on the outskirts, not in the, uh, not in the main government area. Mm -hmm. But you can see how modern Beijing is. You can see how good the infrastructure the cars are. But Let it's me really add one worse thing, than that. Russell. Let me add one thing. No potholes. I looked at that video, I looked at that clip, I didn't see any potholes at all. So the Chinese have really got it over us now on potholes. No, you, you're exactly right, Jay. You had a great observation. Um, that's what I wanted to show. No potholes. They do a meticulous job of, of having roads that 
are well maintained. It's so clean. You won't even see any rubbish on the on the roads. Um, it's so it's incredible. Yeah. But you know, you know, we go back to this major problem. It's the China dream. Everybody wants to own a car, and so transportation now, um, for the last ten years, maybe seven years, we have 300 million cars registered in China. That's more than U.S. In 2013. China had 20 million cars versus 15.6 million in the U.S. Now it's up to 300 million. Beijing alone has 5.6 million cars um, in Beijing. And a population of 21.7 million in a city that's larger than Connecticut, 6,000 square miles, and a population density twice that of New York City. Wow. So as you can see, transportation is so important, Jay. Yes. Yes, I mean, if you get locked up uh, in a city that size, the city stops functioning, the economy stops functioning, and people can't really, you know, l live. So for a quality of life in a city that size, you really must have transportation. So let's talk about it. What have you got available to make, you know, to get around? What facilitates your ability to get from one side of the city to another? You know, Jay, let's, let's take a look. Um, at, at, I've got a video here just to give our audience a flavor introduction of um, of what's it like on a Saturday afternoon. It was a little bit busy. Let's look and see what the street looks like with cars. Okay. And then we can then introduce our audience into some of the modes of transportation. Yeah, this is you just this past Saturday, 48 hours ago, right? That's right. As you can see, it, it's I'm all dressed up out there. I'm out in the pollution. I'm out in the streets <laughs> right on round zero. I almost got hit by a car, but let's take a look. <laughs> Russell Liu, Think Tip Global, and we're here today to look at China's transportation system. In 2014, there were 300 million registered drivers in China, and I think that number today has eclipsed in the number of auto drivers in the U.S. As you can look around me, you can see what's it like on a typical Saturday afternoon. Although the show is on a Tuesday morning, I wanted to give an idea. This is gridlock transportation. You have cars of all sorts, double-decker buses. So how do people move around here? With a population of 20 million people on any given day, Beijing still has to move around. Hear the sounds and sights. And we're going to take you to explore and examine Beijing's transportation system. <laughs> it's like, this is like midtown Manhattan with all that traffic beeping whatnot. You know, I mean, I, you got to appreciate Hawaii. We don't hunk our horns that way, but New York does. And I guess Beijing does too, eh? <laughs> yes, I, I love to be in Hawaii when I consider um, the streets here in Beijing on a crowded day like this. Um, <laughs> lots of pollution, but you can see how people live. They love their cars. But, you know, the government is getting cracking down on this. So what's happening, Jay, is that now you have to win a lottery. You have to actually win a lottery to be able to get a permit to register and to get a car. And um, you can wait two to three years. I have friends that have waited two or three years, and God knows when they're going to get a car, allow them to be registered. Well, that's actually great. As far as I'm concerned, I think, uh, you know, you've got to limit cars. Otherwise, you get everybody congested all day long. And frankly, in Hawaii, we should have limited cars in Honolulu a long time ago. Um, we'd have a better quality of life here. And I think the Chinese are very smart to put that kind of limitation on things. Yes, Jay. And so, so then the question is, if they're going to limit the cars, we've got the bikes, that, it's the green movement, but we talked about the previous segment. But a couple of years ago, Jay, um, you may recall, I believe that you came with me. I think we jumped on a bus. And I kind of want to show the audience what a Chinese bus looks like. Now, this is a, a double-decker bus. Um, I had to do this on a day when the bus was not crowded. Otherwise, I could not walk through crowds of people. But when I took a look at bus, and, you know, like you say, people, Americans are afraid to get on the bus. They don't get on the bus here. They're afraid. But it's dirt cheap. It's about two kwai, two renminbi, or about 30 cents. Uh -huh. And the bus can literally take you right around the city, right around this huge megapolis city. And in fact, it's sort of like riding the bus. So yeah. Let's take a look at what a bus looks like. Yeah, great. catch the bus. As you can see, the buses are all sorts, double-decker buses. There are buses that come on time every few minutes, so you never will miss your ride. 
And it's very easy because all it takes is one of these cards. This card will get you on the bus and it will get you also on the subway. And a bus ride typically is about two renminbi, two quai. So it's a very affordable means of transportation. 21.7 million people, many ride the bus. I noticed a lot of people on that bus had their cell phones that were uh, uh, tweeting or <laughs> doing social media, one kind or another. Uh, I, I suppose that's uh, universal these days. But it wasn't crowded, and it was clean, and the whole thing looked like a pretty good experience. And I say to myself, you know, I say to myself, gee, why, why can't Honolulu have double-decker buses? Uh, isn't it easier to have a double-decker bus than one of those long, connected, two-bus-in-a-row things? Um, you know, again, they, they really have their hand on how to do this. And I really like the notion that you can always get a bus. You don't have to wait very long. So that could be a favored way to get around the city, eh? You know, you know Jay, it's interesting that you point out these buses are very efficient. They actually are very, very efficient. If you miss a bus, you want to catch a certain bus. It's like two minutes later, another bus comes in mm -hmm. and you easily can catch it. Mm -hmm. And what you didn't see on this bus um, was something that's standard in all the Beijing buses, especially the long commutes. There's a TV. There's ongoing commercials and TV running, um, and so it's 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 really interesting how they work this in. Um, and you know, it's, really, it's too bad, one though, Russell. A one, one thing they must be missing, though, and I'm and I'm sad for them, is that on the TV they have on the bus where you sit and you ride on the bus and you watch the TV, they don't have Think Tech Hawaii, they don't have Russell Liu talking about transportation in Beijing. You've got to speak to those people, Russell, and we can give you all kinds of footage they can include on their buses, don't you think? I think that'd be great, and they don't have Jay Fidel on the bus, actually. <laughs> we need to get a Jay Fidel, a big, smiling Jay Fidel, who says, have a nice day, have a think tech day. <laughs> anyway, that's really nice, and so is that is that your favorite way of getting around on the bus? When you and I were together in Beijing, uh, when I when I visited you, um, you, you took me on the bus, and it was an easy way to get around. It wasn't the only way, though. Well, you know, Jay, um, what I want to get to the main meat of this today's topic is is the really efficient way what they've what they've done is the subways. Now, the subway is very critical because moving people off the cars, getting them in the subways, and literally a huge city, you know, just a business district is like one end of LA to the next. And I wanna give readers a glimpse of, of what the subway looks like before, but let me give you a background. Now, do you know what city is the largest subway in the world in terms of miles? London. No, not even London. Second guess. New York? Okay, no. fair, all right. So a few years ago, it was purported that Shanghai had the largest uh, number of miles for tracks in the city, 340 miles. But today, Beijing has um, 357, it might have, I'm sorry, it has 430 miles of tracks in the city. And now it is, I believe, the largest subway system in the world. London has only 250 miles, New York has only 232 miles versus 430 miles of subway line miles. And there's 19 lines, 19 lines, 345 stations. Can you imagine that? And I think there's a map. You can take a quick look what the Beijing subway looks like, just looking at the map. Wow. You want to show the map? Yeah. We're showing the map now. It, 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 it looks like a New York subway map, as a matter of fact, with the color-coded lines and the 19 lines and all that going out into the suburbs. And it sure looks like a lot of options and a lot of crisscrosses where you, you know, can transfer and move from one line to another. It looks complex. Russell, do you get lost, you know, with so much subway? Well, you know, Jay, it, it's actually, once you get the subway, it's seamless. I jump in a subway, I can get clear across the city, never popping out to smell the pollution or see the pollution. And I just transfer, I use a card, which allows me to swipe it in to go in. And actually now, if you have an Android phone, you can actually use your phone to swipe in at the subway toll gate. Not only that, 
Uh, currently, there's about 12 million people who ride the subway daily, 12 million people. By 2020, um, the city ridership will be about 19 million people. But it's really big. But let's take a look at and let's go down the tube. Let's see what it looks like. Before I got a video we go on down that. the tube, Russell, before we go down the tube, we're going to have a short break. That, that's way people can appreciate going down the tube all the more when we come back from this break. That's Russell Liu. And uh, we're, at, uh, we're talking about the Beijing transportation blues. He joins us by Skype from Beijing, and we're moving 21.7 million people in a city larger than the state of Connecticut uh, here on ThinkTech. We're going to take a short break. We'll come back. We're going to find out what it's like to go down the tube. This is ThinkTech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I'm a firefighter. A teacher. I'm a farmer. I'm a barber. A waitress. A mom. We're all part of your community. Every day we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when you experience a moment of uncertainty, something or someone's behavior that doesn't seem quite right. These are the moments to take a pause. Because if something doesn't feel right, it's probably not. It's not about paranoia. Or being afraid. It's about standing up and protecting our communities. One detail at a time. Because a lot of little details can become a pattern. We. 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 We trust our instincts. Just like you should. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Okay, we're back. We're live with Russell Yu, who joins us from Beijing live by Skype. And he's, he's been giving us these videos uh, from over the weekend, showing us all his adventures in taking various transportation modes around Beijing. It's really impressive. You know, I mean, uh, we have a background behind me from the Forbidden City, uh, which uh, suggests, you know, that, the, that Beijing is an ancient city. And it is an ancient city. But if you look at Russell's videos, it's modern it's one of the most modern cities you can find in the world right now. So, Russell, can you take us down the tube and show what it's like in the underground of Beijing? Yes, Jay. Let's go down into the Beijing tube, the largest subway system in the world. We're going to catch two here. We're going to catch the Beijing Rail uh, subway, one of the most efficient, largest subway systems in the world and see and experience what it is to ride the subway and to see how fast the subway will take and how comfortable it is when we're gonna travel clear across the city many, many miles. Think of Beijing like Los Angeles. If you went from the top of Los Angeles to the bottom of Los, end of Los Angeles, it's, it's a very far distance, but we're gonna show you how efficient travel is in China. Time to get off. All right, we're back here in the Beijing Railway Station. This is the Beijing South Railway Station. And as you can see behind me, this is Saturday afternoon, and people are lining up now to catch a train. Extremely modern. This is one of the largest train stations out here in Beijing and China. And there are literally over 20 gates out here. And as you can see, people lining up. Simply, they will go through the gate, 
with their tickets. They will catch the escalator down right to the platform, and it's very easy to catch a train in Beijing. Again, Russell Liu from the Beijing South Railway Station. That's really impressive, Russell. It looks like a convention center. It's brand new. All those signs and colors and animation, it's a very pleasant place to be. It's obvious that uh, that Beijing, the city of Beijing, the country of China, has put plenty of bucks into that to design it and make it so spacious and comfortable. I'm really, I'm really impressed. I mean, there are very few uh, subway systems look as good as that one. Uh, and frankly, New York subway doesn't look anywhere, anywhere near as good as that one. Sorry. Um, so I guess they're really invested in it, and I guess for a good reason. <laughs> So how do you avoid getting lost? How do you avoid getting lost in a subway system that size? You know, Jay, you don't get lost. Everything is done intuitively. Every subway car, there's a map, and it shows you the connection points. And every subway station, you can find maps all around. And better yet, Tim Cook and Apple are happy. Because you know why? Everybody downloads. I've got like four different apps that are for the subway. And it shows me the map of every place, and I can plug in with my iPhone, and I can say, I'm going to go from this station to this station. What's the best route? And it will pull up and tell me what's the best route. It will actually pull it up on the on my Apple phone, the app. And not only that, is foreigners like to ride the subway. Why? Because, because of WTO, everything's in Chinese and English. So all the announcements are not only in Chinese, but in English. Mm. So if you go to some of the a other Asian cities, I don't think you have a bilingual aspect. Mm. And it's amazing. Everybody can speak English to young people. So if you get lost, you just ask people, where is this place? And it's great because when I go out, say, across the city for dinner to meet somebody, I ask a restaurant, what's a subway exit? My standard line. They tell me exactly which exit, A, B, C, or D, and how far from the subway. So it's incredible. It's, it's, it's amazing how transportation is done here in Beijing, China. Yeah, smart, good planning, investment of a lot of money, I'm sure, but uh, it's a worthy, worthy cause with a city that size, which requires this kind of transportation. Do, do these apps work on GPS? I mean, will they tell you where you are at a given moment in the system? I'm sorry, Jay, I must have missed my, my, my uh, line here. I, okay, will, will, the, will the apps tell you where you are at a given moment in the system? Well, yes, I, I have my I turn on my smartphone, uh, and it will tell me exactly where I am in the city, and I never get lost, and I can find out how to, to get to the subway lines very easy from there. In fact, I have a Garmin watch. And I actually downloaded the Chinese map in here so I can get on my iPhone and figure it for my Garmin where to get. To, it'll show me the actual walking route or the driving the route that I have to drive on. So we talk about modern day world. It's a global world with technology. Yeah. And it's amazing what technology does and how the Chinese have leveraged it to make life easier, make life better. Yeah. Well, but as I say, Jay. Not only for the Chinese, not only for you, uh, who live who lives there, but uh, you know, for uh, visitors and Americans and uh, tourists from all over the world, it sounds like it's really easy to get around. This is a great advance, not only for the local people, but for everyone who visits Beijing. Yeah? Yes, Jay, and, and it's amazing. I've been here now 15 years. When I first got here, Jay, I actually rode those mini buses. You had one subway line, two subway line. Uh, buses, not as many, but I rode the minibus. And if you go into Time Magazine, you'll go back 15, 20, you'll see people in little minibus, all huddled in, wearing green jackets in a cold winter day, trying to make it from one end to another inner city, a short route. And today it's amazing what has happened. Modern infrastructure, modern roads, no potholes, as you notice. Uh, and the subways are great. Yeah. But the big news is 2022 with the uh, Winter Olympics in China, Beijing is going to expand and it's going to grow six times greater. And the new thing that's going to be in is the train lines, now not subways, train lines to connect this vast region. And one of the next shows, we're going to take a look uh, on China's high-speed rail. China has now 
the fastest high-speed rail in the world. And the ride is fantastic. And we would like to take our view to take a look and see that. What is it like to ride the rail? I have friends that last night took the high-speed rail from Beijing to Shenzhen, and they're going to cross over to Hong Kong today. And it's going to be in six hours. Wow. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Uh, okay, we don't have a video on that, but uh, I'm I'm really impressed with that because uh, it, otherwise it would take you know I don't know days to get down to uh, what uh, to Hong Kong, and uh, now you can go from Beijing, which is in the, sort of the northeast quadrant of the of the of the country, all the way down there in six hours. That's really remarkable. That's got to be one of the fastest trains in the world, Russell. Yes, Jay, and and so. The rail, which is another mode of transportation, which, which we'd like to have feature, is incredible because now the one belt, one road project, yeah. China is going to connect all the way up through the Middle East, up through Turkey, up to all these places, all the way to Europe. Uh, about a few months ago, the first train, Transcontinental, went from Yiwu, China, which is near Sh Shanghai, all the way up to London, all the way, and it took 12 days. So we're seeing how the Chinese. Um, or making transportation work for them economically, as well as make it convenient for people to live. So what's happening is that the, in Beijing itself, people are starting to move away from the city, to uh, being able to afford housing because the transportation system works here, and it's a miracle. So it's part of China's central planning. Uh, they've done a great job, um, as I've seen over the past 15 years, and things are going to get even just way out of scale. Um, we'll see in the next few years. Well, I have to visit you again, Russell. Maybe I'll take the Chinese train from Europe all the way across Russia or the soft underbelly there and, and arrive and find you in Beijing on, on a fantastic train ride using the Chinese train. One road, fabulous. And, I, you know, it can't, it, it's got to be a huge leverage for the Chinese economy, for the Chinese image in the world. But the Chinese connectivity with so many other places, so smart. Gee whiz. I can't wait to do it, Russell. So what would you say to summarize all of this? What would you say uh, it means to you and to us? Well, you know, I think I think for, for our, our audience in the U.S., we just need to become more global. We need to use the technology. We need to dream a little bit. You know, and and we cannot be afraid of it because this is what's happening, and this is an example of how the Chinese use technology, how it makes them more global, and how it makes life much more uh, easier to live in. It's much more convenient, and um, hopefully, we'll get the rail uh, or the uh, the mass transit line in Honolulu uh, working, and we'll hopefully at least experience something like that. Yeah, well, we can learn a lot. So are you going to see Donald Trump when he comes around on Friday? Well, um, we hope to see we hope to see Donald Trump. Uh, I, 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 I understand that he's coming on Friday, but um, the traffic's going to be a mess. I may not be able to get out of the subway at the U.S. Embassy. <laughs> Thank you, Russell. It's always great to talk to you. Thank you so much for those video clips. And I look forward to talking with you again soon. That's Russell Yu, uh, an American lawyer living and working in Beijing uh, on uh, Think Tech Global. And he's talking about the Beijing transportation blues and successes. Aloha, Saijin, xie xie, Russell. How was that, Jay? It was wonderful. <laughs> much for the audience. They do. You're getting better at, at, you know, at figuring them out and being in the right place and all that. So uh, all in all, I think that was a great show. So, so we'll, we'll find some more interesting things. I think the, the big